in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verses 44 to 46, we read, It was now about the sixth hour, and the sun's light failed, so that darkness came over the whole world until the ninth hour. The veil of the sanctuary was torn right down the middle. And Jesus cried out in a loud voice, saying, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. With that, he breathed his last. This is the final word of the seven last words of our Lord Jesus hanging on the cross. This is the perfection, if I may say that, of the mission of Christ that has been from the very beginning all the way back to Abraham. We see this, for example, on that evening when uh, Abraham was offering Isaac, when he was about to strike Isaac, here was a lamb on the side, ready to be stricken, ready to be given up on behalf of Isaac on behalf of humanity, ready to commit to offer his whole life and body and soul for the sake of humanity. And again, we see this in Isaiah, for example, in the servant songs, the Ebed Yahweh of the 42nd chapter of the book of Isaiah, we see the servant of God ever willing to give up himself for the sake of you and me without any resistance, without doubts, without rebellion, without protesting, unlike you and unlike me always protesting in front of the Word of God. When they were about to enter Jerusalem, Peter was saying, No, Lord, let's not get inside. And the Lord told Peter, Peter, what you are thinking is not the mind of God. What you are thinking is the mind of Satan. Because in God, we have to enter Jerusalem. We have to accomplish the mission. We have to follow the will of God. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he, he was struggling. His humanity was there. And he was perspiring with blood. And he was saying, Father, if it is only possible, take this cup away from me but not my will, your will be done. If I were to, to draw the face of a Christian, it is not face. If I'm going to, to caricature the face of a Christian, it should be the face of the Lamb, or else it should be the face of the servant of Yahweh. His face mangled, willing to be buffeted and spit upon for your sake and mine. In St. Paul to the Philippians, for example, he would, he would describe this Son of God as somebody who was willing and prepared to go even lower than a man, to go, in fact, down below than a man, so much lower. 
than where you are and where I am. Because when God loved us, He loved us not from above, from His throne, He loved us from below, from the throne of the cross. Because that, that, that's the, the pedagogy of loving. Hindi pwede magmahal pag nasa taas. Pwede lamang magmahal pag nasa baba. Kaya ginawa ng Panginoong Diyos. And in a way, that is so much a scandal to the world, to the Jews, to the Greeks, and to you, and for you, and for me. Scandaloso ang pagkamatay sa krus. Like a criminal. But when one is a Christian, there is no other term. There is no other way but the way of God. And the way of God is the cross. Yung krus lamang po, mga kapatid, ang daanan ng Diyos. Ito po yung dinaanan ng Diyos. When you recite the station of the cross, we are saying, because of the Holy Cross, you have redeemed the world. Ito po yung daanan lamang ng Diyos. Ito yung kinakatakutan natin daanan because right now, lahat tayo tumatakbo, umaalis sa harap ng mga crosses sa mga buhay natin o sa buhay natin. The Lord knew this and He was ever willing to do that. Into your hands, I commit my spirit sa mga kamay ng Diyos. Ito yung crisis natin, ito yung, ito yung misery natin because we have been always unwilling to put our lives in the hand of God. We would rather that we put our lives in our own hands, not in the hands of God. Napakayabang po natin, akala natin, alam natin ang bukas. Kaya gusto natin ilagay ang ating mga buhay, mga buhay-buhay sa ating mga sariling kamay. Isinasabi pa nga po natin, eh, ay ang buhay, life is how I make it. I am the captain of my soul. Akong bahala sa buhay ko. This was the greatest, greatest temptation of the people of Israel in the, in the desert. They want to plot their own destiny. Ito rin po yung temptasyon ng ating Panginoon sa Kristo sa disyerto. When he was brought by, by Satan to the pinnacle of the temple, and he was asked to jump, which was actually to, to, to draw, to paint his own way of living, not the way of God, designed according even from the earlier on, like I said, the Lamb. Ito po yung ating krisis araw-araw. Yung ating difficulty sa araw-araw po, mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, mga kababayan, nahihirapan tayo sumunod sa kalooban ng Diyos. It's hard to commit our spirit to God. Actually, dalawa lamang ang utos ng Diyos eh. Yun lamang, love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, and your neighbor as you love yourself. When you see this, when you say this, rather, love God, it is actually committing your life into the hands of God. So that when you go back to the psalm, sasabihin po natin, The Lord is my shepherd, and there is nothing I shall want. That the Lord is enough. That if I put my lives in the hand of God, it is enough. Pero ano pong nangyayari? He seemed not to be enough. He seemed not to be the shepherd. We have so many shepherds. Araw-araw po yan. Naghahanap tayo ng iba't ibang mga shepherd. Ng ibang mga Diyos-Diyosan. Ng ibang mga God and Goddesses. Ang numero po dyan, numero uno po niyan, the God of gold. Our wallets. Our securities. Asan po yung ating mga securities? Kinakaya natin iwanan yung ating minamahal sa buhay to look for the securities. Ganun ba yun? Kinakaya natin maghiwahiwalay ng ating mga, 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 mga minamahal sa buhay to look for securities. Asan po yung security natin? Asan po yan? Sa petrodollar? O sa kalooban ng Diyos? Into your hands, I commit my spirit. At the end of the day, isa lamang ang, like, like what the Lord told Mary and Martha, Mary, or rather Martha, Martha, you know, so much troubled about so many things. Nagkakandara pa ka sa maraming bagay, but when, when you re- remove all, all the trainings of life, isa lamang ang kailangan. There's only one thing necessary. And Mary has chosen the better part. Just to be that, to follow the will of God, to follow the way of God, to follow the path of God, 
to commit our lives into the hands of God. Because the moment we put our lives into the hands of God, we are free. Absolutely free. Parang bata baga, na inlagay ang kanyang buhay, inintrust sa kanyang tatay, sa kanyang ama. Wala siya no problema pa. Because nakasandal sa tatay, nakasandal sa ama. Ngayon, saan tayo nakasandal? Saan ka nakasandal? Eh baka naman doon sa inyong mga securities. Come on. Baka naman doon sa inyong mga wallets. Come on. Asan ba? Be very sure na itong sinasandalan mo is the real one. Baka naman mga Diyos-Diyosan lang yan. Tulad ng, tulad ng woman na, Samaritan woman at the well. Sinasabi ni Jesus, get your husband. Sabi niya, wala akong husband. Totoo. Pero marami yun. Totoo. Sabi ni Jesus, because the, the one that you are leaning on right now, your, your Baal, is not even worth your investments because it's not going to save you to sustain your life. Asan po ngayon? Asan tayo nakasandal? Sinasabi ko rin po ito sa sarili ko. Asan ako yung nakasandal? Baka naman nakasandal ako sa mga ano, sa, sa, sa click lights, sa, all that, that glitter in the world, all the sound and fury signifying nothing. Ika nga ni Shakespeare. Asan po? Asan nakasandal ang buhay natin? The last word of Jesus was this. It was the accomplishment, the perfection of a God who had allowed Himself to be a slave, to be a servant for you and for me. Sabi niya, that last word, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Sana ako din. Sana ikaw din.